Hey guys, welcome to the bunny tutorial on the Addy Bear Lovey from a Crafty Concept is the one that I based the pattern off of and then went from there. So we'll go ahead and get started. And first I cast on and then set my counter back to zero. At that point, I'm going to do 16 rows and then I will finish with out waist yarn and go ahead and be ready to pull my work off of the machine. As you see, whenever I start pulling my work off the machine without waist yarn, um, just to kind of protect my next few stitches, you'll see that I kind of move my fingers around with the slots so that I make sure not to pull off the yarn too far um, and end up having drop stitches that I have to go back for. Once I work all the way around, I will now be ready to go ahead and cinch up both of my ends. I'm not going to do the stuffing yet. I just, I like to get all of my pieces made and then I'll go back and add the stuffing. But whenever I'm cinching up the one end that I'm going to go ahead and close off, you can see that I keep going around underneath those loops in the circle. I find that I'm able to uh, close my circle off better. I do this on all of my hats and anything that that center um, will show. I just feel like it gives it a better finish and it almost closes the hole completely. Once I get that where I want it, I'm going to go ahead and tie off my work and then we will be ready to start in with the body and the um, outside head. And just to note, I did say cinch off both ends, but the one end I'm going to cinch partially and the other end I'm going to go ahead and close completely off. Now we're ready to move on to the outside head and body. I'm gonna go ahead and cast on just the same. I do a full row of cast on and then set my counter to zero. And I'm gonna do 16 rounds just like the regular head. Um, the difference is gonna be how I finish at the 16. And once I get the full 16, I'm gonna set all of my work to the inside of the machine. Once I've done that, I am going to take a couple of yards of that same color of yarn and I'm going to do one round on my machine with that. I like to do a couple of yards just to make sure that I have enough length. And I'm just going to rotate around just like a regular row. And once I get here closer to the first peg, I'm going to pull my tension and then be very careful not to have drop stitches. And at this point, I'm ready to switch my yarn back out. So I'm going to take that extra piece of yarn that will be my cinch string, and I'm going to move it to the center, and I'm going to move my original working yarn back to the outside and put that back into the machine and be ready to continue on. So at this point, you should have two of your longer strands left on the inside for your cinch yarn and your row counter should be at 17. And now I'm going to continue with 29 rows of the same gray, which will put your row counter at 46. Once I'm to that point, I'm going to do a color change with the alternate color that I'm using. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put it on the machine, tie it off, add seven rows of that, um, we'll, which will put your row counter to 53. And then I'm going to change colors back to that original gray and do seven additional rows, which will put your total head and body to 60 rows. I'm then going to finish off with waist yarn. I would recommend doing about five rows. On this one, um, I only had enough to do two rows. I probably should have added some in there because whenever you do this, you could drop stitches pretty easily with only two. Now, if you notice there, I was kind of looking at the hole in my pattern and that tells you where to start and you're gonna count um, until you get to halfway through your work. So for the 46, I'll count 23 stitches in and then I'm just gonna work back and forth to close this off with a slip stitch um, and work all the way back to the beginning. You can count your stitches here just to make sure that you didn't miss any. 
And just a side note, I grabbed this crochet needle. Um, I prefer whenever I'm doing the waist yarn to use a much smaller one. It goes a little bit quicker and a little bit smoother for me, but I just went with this because I was in the middle of videoing and I just went ahead and uh, used this one for this portion. As you work your way down to that very last stitch, you will be ready to tie off your work and remove your waist yarn. At this point, I go ahead and knot and enter that into the inside of my work and trim it off. Now we're gonna go up to the head part and where the cinch string is, I like to fold my work down and I just start closing that in and cinching it. And you are gonna have a lot of excess, but I, you, Put this yarn to the side so that I can use it later in the project if I need. I'm going to cut off the extra and then tie up that section. I'm going to go ahead and set that to the side and grab my 22 and we're going to get started on the arms. I cast on again, set my row counter back to zero and then I'm going to do 20 rows and then do several rows of waist yarn. I'm going to do that again for the other arm. 20 rows, and then my waist yarn. And then stretch out my work on the arms and ears, honestly, on um, the bunny. You don't really need to do waist yarn. Um, I chose to do them on these two, but I've also done it without them. Um, so I know that some people love to do the waist yarn technique. Some people hate it. So you can just play around with it and see what works best for you. But after you get everything tied off, remove your waist yarn. And as you see there where I folded it up, it will be the perfect size for your arms. And you'll go ahead and finish that other arm up just the same um, with closing that end off and removing your waist yarn. Once I have those done, I go ahead and move to the ears. And they're very much like the arms, except for you're gonna double them. So you're gonna cast on, set your row counter to zero, and then you're gonna do 40 rows. And again, here I did waist yarn. It's not absolutely necessary, but I did do it on this one. Once I have the 40 rows done on that first ear, I'm gonna go ahead and move to the second one. Again, 40 rows in the waist yarn. You can go ahead and cinch your ends and then work your way through. And I did change my needle on this one. Um, and you can see that my closing technique went much, much faster. Again, the same thing on the second ear. And once you have this done, you are ready to start getting into the assembly. At this point, I like to take the ears and shape, give them a little bit of shape on the ends. And so in order to do that, the cinch section that I start with, I just kind of fold it in half and I almost make like a little circular pattern in the top just to cinch that so that it keeps those um, edges close together and that will form the little cup on the end of the ear so that the ears stay super cute like you want them. Once I get that kind of where I want it, just play around with it, have some fun with it. Um, but once you get it where you want it, you're ready to tie off and go ahead and move to that second ear and do the exact same thing. I 
I've also seen some people go back in and they'll add some pink accents or things like that, that down the center of the ear. Um, and that's really cute as well. I don't particularly think that it's necessary for this, but have fun and be creative. That's what it's all about. So once we have both of those done, I'll go ahead and set those to the side. And now I'm ready to work on the arms. And I really start the arms out the same way that I did on the um, ears. I just kind of fold that over, get that semicircle kind of where I want it folded in half. And then I am going to work my way down the arms once they're folded. And I'm basically going to do a mattress stitch where I'm zigzagging back and forth, but still doing that mattress stitch so that whenever I pull it tight and cinch it, you will hardly be able to notice where it was joined. I like doing the um, doubled over folded arms. I feel like it gives them a little bit more bulk um, without adding a lot more weight or adding stuffing or anything like that to them. So it gives them a little bit more thickness and I really like the way that they turn out. So once I have that first one done, I'll go ahead and tie it off. And then I will do the exact same thing for the arm on the other side as well. I've had a couple of people say that the mattress stitch can be a little bit too tedious for them. So again, don't worry about perfection. Um, you can definitely do just a regular stitch. It will still turn out absolutely fine. Now we're ready to go ahead and go into the assembly and I'm going to start by stuffing my head, the inside head. Once I get that stuff to the firmness that I want, I'm going to go ahead and finish off that circle. And you can see there, I pulled that circle pretty snug, but as you can see, my finger still fits into the opening. So it's definitely not closed off where I'm happy with it. So I tried to zoom in a little bit here and show you how I go into, I'll pick up a couple stitches and leave a couple stitches behind and pick those up and go into that circle, go back into those loops. And that will start closing my circle off. And I'll just kind of continue working my way around until I'm happy with how it's closing off. And again, I'm picking up a couple and leaving a couple behind. And as you can see, my hole starts cinching smaller and smaller. And whenever I get it about where I'm happy with it, I'll go ahead and tie my end off. And then pull that extra yarn back through the head and trim it off. Now I'm ready to put the inside head into the outside. And I'm just going to work through that, cinch it off. And again, I'm going to do that same circle trick that closes that off really nicely. As you can see there, it's pretty much non-noticeable at all where that original little circle is. So tie that off and again, pull that back through the head and trim your excess. And now I am ready to start joining my arms and my ears. And so I just kind of eyeball this. I set them to the front of the body just slightly, um, but I'm going to try to join them into that crease area as good as I can. Very simple stitch, just getting them attached. Once you have that secured well, you're ready to tie off and then pull your extra yarn through your work and trim. Now I'll go ahead and move to the other side of my work and do the exact same thing. Again, just slightly forward um, on that halfway mark and just work your way through that arm till you get it secured and you're ready to tie off. Now I'm ready to start on the face, and this is the part that everyone um, has asked or requested to see. And as you can see, I just kind of find my way to the middle. My camera angle, it doesn't really look like middle there, but I promise it is. And then if you'll notice, I have my middle finger and my thumb kind of where I want that the cheek edges to end up. 
and it's pretty much the center of the arms. Again, play with this. You can make it bigger, make it smaller. But as you see here, I'm just doing a quick base stitch and doing a pretty large oval. And again, just kind of using my fingers to mark where I want it. And once I've made it through, I go ahead and cinch that up. Whenever you, and I, I go ahead and knot, the, knot it off at this point, and whenever you cinch that, you can see, you can see some of the little bumps there. That's why I go back a second round. I like to go back so that I can pull those little stitches from where I basted it and get them down to a really good, nice finished look so that it doesn't look pulled so much. And so at this point, this is where I'm going in, and I'm going to go in basically opposite of how I did the base stitch on the previous round. So where I went under before, I'm going to go over and the opposite. And so what that's going to do is it's going to work through those little popped up stitches, and it's just going to kind of line everything up to where it lays really good. work your way all the way back around. Whenever you have your stitches like you like them, that's great. If you feel like you need to go around another round, definitely go for it. But there's not really a whole lot of magic to this little cinch circle um, other than getting it in there and then pulling it to cinch it once you have it in. Once I'm happy with that, I go ahead and tie it off. And now I'm ready to start embroidering my nose. I leave my little marker in to show where the center is because I'm going to use that to kind of figure out exactly where I want that nose to start. So you saw me take that out and I went right back into that section. And with this, I'm just going to start with a really big triangle and kind of get the outline of my nose first. Try to space it as evenly as you can from side to side. You don't want to pull this section too tight. You can see here, I felt like that one, that was a little bit too tight. So I played around with the yarn a bit to where I got it to where I was back happy with it. Once I'm happy with the shape and the location of everything, I'm just going to work my way back and forth through that triangle side to side and work my way into the center. If you'll notice, I also use that cinch area or that cinch yarn kind of as a guide of exactly where to go to. And that's really a good guide to go to put your needle right behind it and it'll make your nose fairly even on the tops whenever you're coming back through so that you don't have a really super jagged nose area. And again, I'm just going to continue until I have kind of all of the holes and gaps filled in there. And if you'll start noticing, it makes it almost look like your little cheeks are puffing out. Once I'm happy with that, I'm going to finish it off by going all the way down to the bottom area and then leaving that little stripe between the nose and the bottom of the cheeks. Once that's tied off, I am ready to go ahead and move to my ears. I like to do my ears next on this just because I like to be able to see where my eyes are, are going to land a little bit better. Um, and if you'll notice, I took that end where I had uh, crocheted off that flat panel um, from the ear and I took that and cinched it slightly just so that it fit better onto the head and it allowed me to have a little bit of a curve in the ear. Now get both of those ears placed and sewn on really well. And once I have that complete and everything tied off and secured, we're ready to go ahead and move to the eyes. It 
For the eyes, I start with uh, just a regular strand of black thread, and then you'll notice here, I divide that in half, and I've got two strands versus the four strands. And now I'm just gonna kinda eyeball it here and go in and start forming my little eyelid and eyelashes. It's definitely not necessary to do that eyelid and eyelashes. I just think that it gives a cute little finish on this one. You can also go in and just do the simple square eyes or round embroidered eyes if you would rather. also like the two strands for being able to tie this work off. If you'll notice, once I start getting to my ends, I'm comfortable with tying that work off. That knot is so small that whenever you pull it back in, you hardly notice it at all. Once I get the first one done, again, I'm just going to kind of look and see what I've got going on the other side, match it up pretty good, and get that eyelid embroidered in and my eyelashes. You kind of have to play around with those eyelashes and exactly where you're putting them on the stitch because they are pretty easy to kind of get buried into that knitwork. So once I'm happy with that, I'm ready to tie everything off and pull my work through the back and trim off my yarn. And now if you would like to add a tag, you're ready to add your tag. Whenever I add my tags, I like to split the yarn again into two strands. That way it goes through a little bit easier for me. And once I have that all good and secure, I'm ready to tie it off and finish up my project. I hope that you guys have enjoyed watching the bunny tutorial. And I can't wait to see all of your creations. And don't just limit yourself to a bunny. Think outside the box and play around with it. Just have fun and be creative.